What's up everyone, this is MikeBen96 here, and in this video we're going to take a look at iOS 4.3 beta for iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad, and we're also going to talk a little about the Verizon iPhone that was recently announced on January 11th. So let's get to it. Alright, so we're going to jump right in to talk about what exactly is new in iOS 4.3. Now, this is just the beta version we're going to be talking about. Uh, the actual iOS 4.3 has not been released yet to the public. iOS 4.3 beta was released to developers a few weeks ago. And there's been a lot of speculation on what the new features would be in iOS 4.3. And a lot of people were talking about app subscriptions and major bug fixes from probably well, one of Apple's biggest firmware releases since iOS 4.0, which was iOS 4.2. And with iOS 4.2 came a lot of bugs, and people expected iOS 4.3 to fix those bugs, make things a little easier to maneuver around your device, etc. So we're going to take a look at what exactly does iOS 4.3 bring us when it is released. So again, this is just the beta version. It's the first beta version. So the second beta version uh, has not come out yet um, since I made this video. And also iOS 4.3 has obviously not been released yet since I made this video. Now I have put iOS 4.3 on my iPod Touch and I actually took it off almost instantly. Uh, iOS 4.3 beta is way too buggy to be used on some devices. And on my device, it obviously cannot be used for daily activity. For example, when trying to update my applications, it moved around all of the icons on my home screen and it failed to update the application. So it's just really buggy. Applications cr crash a lot. And so if you're not a developer, I highly recommend um, not putting iOS 4.3 beta on your device. Just wait until iOS 4.3 comes out to the public and you'll know when that is because it will be available through iTunes. If you uh, hook up your device to iTunes and click on the check for update button, it'll say that iOS 4.3 is available to download and it'll ask you if you do want to download it. So, but as of right now, I would not get iOS 4.3 beta um, if unless you're a developer and you want to get it. So we'll just jump right in discussing what exactly iOS 4.3 is going to bring us. So, one major thing in iOS 4.3 is the AirPlay improvements. Now, AirPlay was introduced in iOS 4.2, and it added the ability to stream pictures, music, and video over Wi-Fi to your Apple TV. A very nice uh, feature for devices if you had an Apple TV. It made sharing your media a lot easier. Well, one big problem with AirPlay was that AirPlay only worked through Apple-related apps, such as the Videos app. So if you had any videos that were synced to your device through iTunes, those would be the only videos that would work with AirPlay. Well, in iOS 4.3, Apple gives application developers the ability to add AirPlay support to their apps. So in an app maybe such as Netflix, you would then be able to stream that Netflix video over to your Apple TV, which is a very nice feature, but I don't know how much you would really want to do that because Apple TV already supports Netflix. But that's just an example. But of course, the application developer does need to add AirPlay support in their app, so it isn't going to be an automatic thing where if the application has video, that it's automatically going to play on your Apple TV the application developer needs to add it. Another feature is AirPlay will now work in Safari, but again, the or the website developer in that case needs to add AirPlay support to their website. So it isn't just an automatic thing where any video that you play on the internet will play to your Apple TV. So uh, as of right now, the only videos that automatically come with AirPlay support are videos synced through iTunes to your device or YouTube videos. Most YouTube videos will work 
Uh, I think there are some YouTube videos that have restrictions on them that will not play to Apple TV, but most videos should work through YouTube. So, that is just about it for that part of AirPlay. Another really cool feature that was added in AirPlay that uh, people have been wanting for a while if you have an iPhone or an iPod Touch 4th generation, uh, if you have a device with a camera, in order for the pictures and videos that you took on your device to work with AirPlay, you needed to sync to iTunes, which was a hassle. So if you took a video on your iPhone, you would not be able to stream that to your Apple TV right away. First, you needed to sync to iTunes. Once you sync to iTunes, then the video will then become available to stream to your Apple TV. Well, in iOS 4.3, that has been changed, and now when you take a video, it becomes instantly available to stream to your Apple TV. Another nice improvement, if you are on the go or something, don't have your computer, or overall it's just a nice improvement, because you don't have to sync your device, because obviously syncing is not yet wireless. Maybe in a future update, we'll see that uh, syncing will be wireless. But for now, <clears throat> Uh, this is just good enough. Another nice feature we see, that is not it, is that if you do have a device with a camera, that many new camera filters have been added. So we will see those coming in iOS 4.3 so to add some nice effects to your photos. Another new feature, it's not really a feature, it's more of a small little change. Uh, the FaceTime icon looks a little different in iOS 4.3. It now has a more chrome look, and it looks slightly similar to the Mac FaceTime icon, FaceTime for Mac icon. So <clears throat> another, another nice little change. I actually do like this icon a little bit better. It looks more professional. Another change in iOS 4.3 is the camera shutter sound is a little bit different uh, when you take a screenshot and a photo through your camera it sounds a little bit different a little more metallic if you would so uh, very again a very subtle change but it is a change another feature in iOS 4.3 is in your status bar you will see this little icon right here for any missed FaceTime calls. And so it's basically just a video camera with an arrow going through it. So if you miss the FaceTime call, you will get that little icon in your status bar telling you you missed a FaceTime call. Alright, so that just about does it for the camera and FaceTime improvements. Another feature that is new to iOS 4.3 is the Find My Friends. Now, it actually hasn't been announced by Apple, but it's just speculation by developers who saw this in the iOS 4.3 coding. And basically, what it'll do is it'll allow uh, mobile me users to see where their other friends and family members are. Uh, you do have to have a mobile me account, and your friends and family that you want to use this feature on must have a mobile me account. And so that mobile me accounts are kind of expensive, so it's probably just another uh, technique to get you to buy a mobile me account, but that feature is available if you want it. And because of the Find My Friends edition, it is obviously not the best privacy, and we have seen that Apple has changed the location services option location. So it is now in the main settings menu, uh, it's the second last option on an iPhone, on an iPod Touch, it's the last option. And uh, we don't really know if this is the reason that the option has moved, but that is the best reason we could think of. Uh, because, obviously, Find My Friends is going to pose a great security risk, and so they want to give users a little more uh, control of the option, and make it a little easier to actually find the setting. I'm sure no one not a lot of people have really known where the location services on off was until uh, in this update where it's 
uh, right there when you open settings. So it's nice that if they are adding the Sign My Friends feature, that the location services is a little more easy to get to. So another thing that we have found new in iOS 4.3 is support for two new devices. So while some developers were looking through the coding of iOS 4.3, they've come across something that suggests that maybe iOS 4.3 was built to support some new devices, such as maybe an iPad second generation, and maybe an iPhone 5. So we will see if that is true. We are expecting both of these devices to be announced later this year. The iPad should be announced in a few months, and the iPhone uh, a little later, maybe in July or August. Now, iOS 4.3, unfortunately, is probably not going to be compatible with iPod Touch 2G and the iPhone 3G. The iOS 4.3 beta has not been compatible with either of these devices, and so when iOS 4.3 is released, it will probably not be compatible with these devices, meaning that iOS is probably no longer supporting either of these two devices which is sad to see, but let's face it, both these devices are pretty old. If you still have an iPod Touch 2G, you're probably living in the Stone Age. So it's time to get yourself an iPod Touch 4G. If you have an iPhone 3G, you're probably going to want to hold off uh, to get the iPhone 5, which should be announced sometime this year. Alright, <clears throat> unless you really want the iPhone 4, but we are expecting the iPhone 5 to be announced later this year. Alright, so in iOS 4.2, we saw that the Notes app got some new fonts. And those fonts were Marker Felt, Helvetica, and Chalkboard. Well, iOS 4.3 takes away Chalkboard and adds a new one called Noteworthy. So Chalkboard gets replaced by Noteworthy, and here is what Noteworthy looks like. So there's a little sample of something typed with Noteworthy. So it is a pretty nice looking font. Uh, looks a lot more like handwriting, where Chalkboard kind of looks, it really looked fake. So I actually really like the Noteworthy font better. So moving on, the slideshow settings on the devices in the Photos app have been moved. So in the Photos app you had the ability to have a slideshow, but the slideshow options could only be adjusted from the Settings app. So if you wanted some different transitions in your slideshow, you had to exit out of Photos, go to Settings, locate the slideshow options, and then after you set whatever you want, go back to Photos and start the slideshow. Well, in iOS 4.3, this was changed, and it's a little easier to change your settings now. Now the settings are located right within the Photos app, making it a lot easier to change your settings. So Apple has really been keeping the ease of use of these devices in mind. Because before this update, I didn't really know there were slideshow settings until I saw them in the Photos app. So, you're making everything a little easier to find. And so another change in iOS 4.3 is the application updates and how the entire application updates works. So, we actually is unconfirmed if it's supposed to look like this. Uh, the updates section of the App Store has been extremely buggy for every user to the point where you can't even update your apps. And so, it's really not known if it's supposed to look like this but it's basically what it looks like the icons for each app are a little bit bigger and they're on a white background instead of a gray one so we'll see if that stays the same in the actual release of iOS 4.3 probably one of the 
biggest things that iPad users love in iOS 4.3 are the multitasking gestures. So these have just been added in iOS 4.3. And basically they let you maneuver around the different options of your iPad um, using the, uh, the touch screen instead of the home button. So you use four or five fingers with all these gestures and what you do is with four or five fingers you pinch inward if you have an open app, like if you have an app open and using four or five fingers pinch inward that'll open up the home screen so it's a nice way of closing out your app without having to reach over for the home button also using four or five fingers you can swipe up to reveal the multitasking bar that'll work um, if you have an app open or not and then also with four or five fingers you can swipe left or right to switch between your open apps making it really unnecessary for you to, to double click the home button to reveal your multitasking bar. So some more cool features for the iPad. Another feature we see in iOS 4.3 is high-res wallpapers in uh, the iPad. And really, we don't know why the wallpapers are high resolution now. And the wallpapers I'm talking about are like the background wallpapers that you can set. So like this one showing in this picture is the bubbles one. There's also one like an ocean and stuff. And those haven't changed. The resolution is now a lot higher. And the only reason we could think of them doing this is because uh, the new iPad will have a HD retina display as compared to the old iPad, which had a slightly blurry display when it zoomed in on. So it's really the only reason we could think of that the resolutions would be higher. Now, I said before that in iOS 4.3, the multitasking gestures was one of the most liked changes in iOS 4.3. Well, I forgot about this one. The iPad side switch. Now, back in iOS 4.1, the side switch on the iPad was changed. It used to be a rotation lock, but in iOS 4.1, it was changed to a mute switch, which people hated because they said, well, the iPad's not a phone, so why would you want to mute it? And it's just, the switch was a lot more useful as a rotation lock. Well, Apple has obviously listened to their customers, as many people complained about that option, and so now Apple has added a selection of choices for you. So now you can choose whether your side switch acts as a rotation lock or a mute switch. So this is probably one of the most well-liked changes for iPad users. On the iPhone, you can now set, there's different settings for the SMS alerts. So you can choose in two minute intervals how many times your phone will ring when you get a text message. And again, all these happen in two minute intervals. You can set it up to ten times that it will remind you. Another cool feature in the iPhone, but not available to really anyone right now, is personal hotspot. Now how personal hotspot works is it changes your iPhone into a Wi-Fi hotspot uh, transmitting its 3G connection. A device can connect to it through Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or a USB connection. <clears throat> now, as I said, no one can really take advantage of this feature yet because Personal Hotspot is only compatible with Verizon. In order to use the Personal Hotspot feature, your carrier must support the feature. Currently, AT&T does not support Personal Hotspot. Verizon is the only carrier that supports this, but there is not yet a Verizon iPhone. The Verizon iPhone will be released next month in February, so not really anyone has the personal hotspot feature yet, um, unless you're a developer or a, a reviewer or something, um, and you have a Verizon iPhone, but the general public cannot use this feature yet. Alright, so talking about personal hotspot, that brings us to the Verizon iPhone. So the Verizon iPhone was announced 
on January 11th. And it was a very anticipated announcement. Just about everyone knew that the announcement was about the Verizon iPhone because it was a very poor kept secret. So everyone was basically right. The Verizon iPhone was announced. Verizon Wireless will now be carrying the iPhone. So on February 10th, February 10th is the release date for the general public. However, if you are a Verizon Wireless customer, you can pre-order the iPhone and have it shipped to your house by February 3rd. So a nice little perk for you Verizon customers out there. And I believe it is starting at $200. Yeah, $200 the Verizon iPhone will be starting at. And that is for the 16 gigabyte version. 199 to be exact. And again, it will be available to purchase on February 10th. Now, a big bummer about this is it will not have 4G LTE. So it will be running on Verizon's 3G network, not 4G network. And the reason for that is it is an iPhone 4. It's not an iPhone 5 or anything. This is the same iPhone that's on AT&T. It's the iPhone 4. And the iPhone 4's battery is not designed to work with 4G. And 4G uses more battery power. So if the Verizon iPhone would have 4G, then the battery would only last so long. It will last significantly less than it's supposed to. So that is why it does not have 4G. But we are expecting that when the iPhone 5 is announced, that that will support uh, 4G. We do not know, though, if the Verizon, Verizon Wireless will carry the iPhone 5 right away. So that is still in um, question if, like, how this whole new iPhone thing will work. Because now that the Verizon is carrying the iPhone starting in February, is AT&T going to get the iPhone 5 first and Verizon's going to be left way behind? Or are both of the carriers going to get the phone at the same time? So that is a very big question that have people wondering, well, should they switch from AT&T to Verizon? Alright, so that basically concludes our discussion about iOS 4.3 and the Verizon iPhone. If you have any questions at all, please email me at techtimemikebed96 at live.com. I guess I can add that in here. And I'll also go to my blog. My blog's link is right here in red on the screen. So go to that blog and that has all of the basic tech time news uh, new reviews and all that we posted there because I can't do a video review of all of my reviews so because I do a lot of reviews so a lot of my reviews have to be strictly text and so because of that um, all my text reviews will be posted on this WordPress blog and everything else oh darn it Everything else will be posted uh, on my, I said that wrong, my WordPress blog will have all my reviews, and the YouTube channel will only have some of the reviews, so the WordPress blog is the place to stay updated, so make sure you go to that blog to stay updated on all of the Tech Time news, and if you have any questions, go to that email address under the link, techtimemikeb96.live.com. Please subscribe to stay updated for all the latest technology news, and see you in the next video.